Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, if you don't mind, I would very much like to continue on with our journey and exploration through the works that can be found in this spectacular set known as Pioneers of African American Cinema. And today I'd like to focus on that film which is described by the materials as being from 1928, though I'll get to that point in a moment. And it is also described as being from filmmaker Richard Morris. The name of the film is 11 p.m. It is a silent work, and my goodness, what a memorable, unforgettable work this is in terms of its story structure and in terms of its style and presentation. There is a lot going on here. It's very exciting stuff. If we were to try to focus on, say, the essence of the plot of this film, 11 p.m., I think we can point to some very fundamental elements. First, there is the element of the structure itself, because we know that it is a multi-tiered or multi-leveled structure, or it seems to be, or it could be interpreted in that way, insofar as it involves or seems to involve one level of narrative structure in terms of a writer and what he needs to do by a certain deadline time period, 11 p.m., that being one level, and then a separate level or seemingly separate but still possibly connected level of narrative being the story of a particular character named Sun Daisy and how his efforts in trying to help and guide and assist certain characters that he meets along the way in his life, how his efforts end up and the arcs of those relationships that he is able to build and forge over time and how they end up over this period of time as i say vis-a-vis -vis these particular characters that he meets and what happens and what are the results of sun daisy's efforts in trying to help these people some of these efforts can be said to lead to quote unquote good results other efforts perhaps lead to quote-unquote not so good results and so this forms the dramatic tension basis for this very uniquely set up narrative level of uh, this character of Sun Daisy and I use the word uniquely because the perspective and approach and style of this particular setup and indeed these setups this narrative structure is one of the strengths of this and what it what it's what makes this particular work i think very memorable there is a type of 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 uh, visual style and finesse that could be said to be akin to maybe experimental works the word surreal has been used uh, say in the essay that's included as part of this set uh, it's been used to describe this particular work. There is a sense of guided motion. There is a sense of a purposely uh, a focused camera that seems to be very much uh, heavily stylized. It could be said almost to be like avant-garde type of cinema, experimental type of cinema. And it is being used to tell this story about these characters and how they meet. And, uh, and the moral trajectory of various characters and how they end up uh, along the way and their interactions leading to some pretty eventful uh, moments in the particular narrative. I mean, there are moments that are very eventful and uh, there is this uh, network of, of uh, relationships that, as I say, develop over time. So it is, a, in a sense, a type of human drama, or maybe in some aspects too, a type of melodrama involving characters. But it is told in this way that is very bold, very avant-garde, and incredibly inventive, thus making for, I think, very compelling cinema indeed, to the point that perhaps some of the beats could be said to be so so unique almost to be wonderfully quirky uh, and very inventive and as i say quite bold and stylish and very memorable indeed there are actually some moments that are described in very vivid detail say in the essay that's included with the set as well as the brief 
write-up or the brief description that's found at the tail end of this particular booklet, it actually gives away a very key element. It gives away the ending of this film. And so what I would suggest is that if you have access to this particular booklet or essay, my suggestion is first watch the film, 11 p.m., and then you can read the materials that are found in this particular booklet. As I say, once you've read, or once, sorry, once you have seen the film, you will know what the story arc is. You will know, for instance, what happens at the end, and then you can go along and read the materials that are found. I wouldn't uh, suggest reading this first because, as I say, it really it gives away the ending. And one of the things that's uh, very, uh, of, of, let me put it this way, uh, the whole work from beginning to middle to end is uh, is a remarkable one and very unique and so to have those elements intact when you watch them i think is part of the fun and surprise so uh, watch the film 11 p.m first and then read the essay and materials that are found here also we should point out that this particular filmmaker richard morris is one regarding which or about whom it seems that very little is known. Another thing that's pointed out in some of the scholarship that's available, for example, the very essential work, which is called Oscar Michaud and His Circle, which is by uh, Pearl Bowser, Jane Gaines, and Charles Musser. There is actually a particular section in that book devoted to a discussion of Richard Maurice and his particular work or what is known about him and his work as a filmmaker again from Detroit, Michigan. And as I say, very little is known, but what survives and the material that we have is very unique, very exciting. In other words, 11 p.m., the work. We also have the, uh, the, the discussion in this particular uh, scholarship about whether or not this film is indeed from 1928. As I say, it's described as being from 1928 here, but there is some speculation that is given by in terms of that particular work that perhaps 11 p.m. might have been 1928 or maybe 1929, something like that. So sometimes you might find it described as being circa 1928 or circa 1929, which is to suggest that there might be those who could look at this film as being made a little bit later than 1928. But be that as it may, it is still described as being from around this particular time period. And once again, when we look at the film and we look at the performances and we look at the boldness of the choices that are made in terms of the narrative, in terms of the style, in terms of the visual flair, and also in terms of the camera work and the structure, what we have is something that is wonderfully weird, quirky, and dynamic. And that makes for really compelling cinematic engagement indeed. And I should say, too, that it is a film that is part of the discussion of what is known as race cinema in the silent period. And in fact, it is part of, say, the discussion in the essay called Race Movies, A Patchwork History by Jacqueline Juma Stewart. Uh, and so it is part of this uh, exploration and journey and very, very important history of early American cinema. And when we look at the film, I think we can also identify certain aspects or elements that could be said to be part of or otherwise consistent with this overall uh, 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 established conversation about race cinema in the silent era of, uh, of the United States and its role in, in world cinema. And we look at the story and look at how, for instance, Sun Daisy is a character that's trying to, in essence, help certain people that he meets along the way. We also see this idea of, of uh, a, 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 an importance placed on a type of moral trajectory or a type of uh, need to achieve certain levels of goodness. And this could be uh, a further extension or interpretation of the role of religion. I know it's not a direct correlation, but it could be interpreted in that type of interpretive sphere, such that we have the idea of divine intervention and perhaps uh, uh, the, the idea of uh, 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 a type of 
of uh, divine justice, if you will, again in the context of the quest towards uh, some kind of goodness or morality tale. And I think this also forms a very important type of, of anchor or type of source of inspiration when we talk about the various stories that we have seen, for example, thus far in the collection of works that we see in Pioneers of African American Cinema. Now, I know that it's very complex and I know it, it, it's a very nuanced discussion. And depending on the film and depending on the filmmaker that is involved, we get different results or different variations and different contexts and different uh, specific examples that are provided, again, in the context of race cinema in the silent period of American movies. Uh, but I can say that uh, 11 p.m. is definitely a part of that conversation. Now, the extent to which that, uh, that conversation can be made, again, it uh, you need to see the film and see the story and how it plays out and how, for example, uh, the story could or could not be interpreted to be, say, a film that is a nuanced examination of race relations. I think that interpretation is definitely possible, although uh, perhaps there is not enough known about Richard Morris at this point in time to make that case uh, definitive. Although I think the conversation is very valid and very reasonable to be had. Also, I think a comparison of Richard Morris with other contemporaries, say Oscar Michaud, is one that has been made by uh, Pearl Bowser, Jane Gaines, and Charles Musser, and I think it's a very valid one. And that also shows the extent to which I think this film, 11 p.m., is a very valuable and essential uh, part of this discussion of race cinema in the silent period. So uh, I think those comparative analyses are very appropriate and also very reasonable and perhaps, yes, uh, very valid and important, as I say, in the context of not just race cinema in the silent period, but in that discussion, how this film 11 p.m. can operate as a type of example of this. And uh, this is my way, of, therefore, of saying that 11 p.m., is a film that operates on so many levels. It operates as a work of art that is uh, 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 crystallizing this notion of, of uh, uh, divine intervention and morality and a type of divine justice, but also in the context of avant-garde and experimental cinema uh, that is taking chances and bold chances and really weird and quirky and beautiful chances uh, in terms of its cinematic palette. And also, I think the mysteries and the curiosities are even raised even more because of the fact that, as of this point in time anyway, relatively speaking, little is known about the filmmaker Richard Maurice, although we do know that this is a film from the Detroit film scene, and so there is this sense of it being part of the fabric of this part of the, 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 uh, of, uh, the United States, which is another, I think, beautiful thing to realize. And it's also indi indicative of the fact that we have these creative voices, Richard Morris being one of the, the uh, one of the bold and inventive ones uh, that is uh, that are out there during this time telling these stories. And my goodness, bringing back to the film 11 p.m. Once you've seen the film, you know what I mean when I say it is wildly inventive and it takes some turns that are just wow. They are just uh, wonderfully rich and strange and uh, once you see them you can never unsee them uh, if you know what I mean once again if you haven't seen 11 p.m. I strongly urge you to not read the essay materials here watch the film first and then you can come back to these particular written materials because as I say it does give away part of the ending the same is true for the the write-up on Richard Morris that's found in uh, Oscar Michaud and his circle, that book. It's a great book, but watch the film first because, as I say, it has a lot of treats and surprises in store for you. This is the film, 11 p.m. Okay, my friends, so that's it for now. And so until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well, and please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Thank you so much, as always, for your time. I very much appreciate it. Stay strong, stay safe, and cheers.